Good evening, everyone. I am Ravi Gupta. I am a founder and CEO of Elest Technology Media Private Limited, and uh, uh, we are uh, running a magazine called Digital Learning for past sixteen years, and we have been writing about uh, innovations in education. And uh, our idea is to document and disseminate the uh, what are the best practices of the uh, education ecosystem globally. and we cover uh, uh preschools schools and higher education all three aspects of it and today uh, we have a, a very uh, eminent uh, guest with us uh, he is uh, none other than shri nitish jain he is the president of sp jain school of global management welcome nitish thanks for joining us uh, thank you for having me ravi it's a pleasure to be with you thank you and uh, today we are going to talk about that uh, what is the legacy of sp jain how sp jain is ranked among one of the top uh, globally uh, one of the best uh, management schools and uh, it is present in multiple uh, countries and uh, how it has all uh, happened so uh, none other than the president of uh, this management school uh, is uh, here with us to explain about this uh, achievement and journey of uh, spjn nitish uh, uh, thank you so much so yeah. spjn was born in 2004 and in that time the world was becoming global at a very frantic pace because of the internet and um, even a small garage in bangalore became a global company and your customers were sitting in some other part of the world you had global supply chains and so on and so forth so we felt that if you study in just one city or one campus no matter wherever it is it's not good enough and so we actually created a model where we had four campuses in four countries and students actually move from one campus to another and in each country they understand how business is done differently for example how business is done in china can be quite different than how business is done in india and students need to understand that because in the business you not only need to learn the tools of business you need to understand the context of business and because our model became quite successful and we are one of the few and only ones to do this because every student moves from one campus to another they got great jobs in the end of it and because they got great jobs they had fantastic careers and hence we got ranked by the economist by financial times by forbes by nielsen and many others year after year so it's been a very pleasing and successful model because when we started off we didn't know how it would pan out can you explain about uh, which all countries you have campuses in and what uh, is the specialization or or focus of each of the campuses so uh, ravi we have campuses in dubai mumbai singapore and sydney and students go to all these campuses or they at least go to three of the four campuses at the end of the program they get an australian mba so uh, we are an australian business school and the degrees that we confer are spjn degrees but from our sydney campus fantastic and uh, do you have any uh, practical examples of how this uh, multi country experience has actually helped the students and the companies like any case studies or if you want to talk about lots lots and lots ravi um, yeah. so the first thing that a lot of students ask us hmm. is uh, do we get jobs outside india and i think when we look at that a very large number of our students get jobs outside india mainly in dubai and in singapore uh besides india of course so that's a tangible outcome and if you look at getting international jobs i don't think there is any other school or any other business school from india that can say the same thing 
very many of our students, 40 to 50 to 60 to 70 percent of our students actually get jobs uh, outside India. And when you are talking about uh, Australia, Singapore, Dubai, there is no dearth of uh, good management schools in those uh, places. So how are you able to compete with them? Very good question, Ravi. <laughs> that was the same question we asked ourselves when we set this up. But you would be very pleased to note that students actually follow SPGEN. So even though they had the option to go to a leading university in, say, Singapore, or they had the option to go to a leading university in, say, Australia, they still choose to join SPGEN. Because when they join SPGEN, they feel confident. We take every effort to help them get that last job for, uh, to enable, uh, uh, to, excuse me, to prepare them to get that job. So if you join a Singapore university, they don't care too much about the job you'll get at the end of it. They have a careers day. If you're successful, great for you. If not, too bad. Australia is no different. But at SPGN, we make getting their job our mission. And so the way in which we prepare them, the companies we get, we tailor their CVs, and so on and so forth, leads to um, more positive outcomes. And today, a lot of students are looking for what will happen to me at the end of the program. And uh, we offer one of the best outcomes. Fantastic. Now, uh, let's talk about the current situation. There is a current disruption going on globally. This is the COVID-19 situation, which has hit every country on the planet Earth. And global economic system, social systems, all systems are disrupted. Now, in this situation, how do you see the management schools are going to change or going to cope up? So you can look at it negatively, or you can look at it positively. Um, let me first say what I mean by negatively. So students who had joined us, had joined us for the full campus experience. And suddenly in the middle of the studies, we have said, you've got to shift to online because the campus is closed. And nobody wanted that, right? I mean, if you are looking to uh, buy a car and we say, take a mobile, you, you would obviously be unhappy. So that's the negative side. And frankly, we feel sad that we had to do it because students have got a bad SPJ experience. But frankly, we could do nothing about it. And we just adapted. But let me also share with you the positive side. The positive side is students have learned a lesson that we couldn't teach them in business school. And this lesson is that, see, the world is what it is. Bad things can happen to you. It can happen to you because of COVID or it can happen to you because of something else. And you cannot change it because it just happens to you. You can't change the event. You have no control but you have full control over how you react to that event. And so, okay, you got COVID, you had to move to online, deal with it, learn that these, these things can happen. And it's a lesson that they've learned. And I can go back in 2009, when exactly the same thing had happened due to the financial crisis. A lot of our students were upset. Okay, they, they, they didn't, um, have to leave the campus, but the job outcomes at the end was troubling them because there were no jobs. They dealt with it. And today, if you talk to those same students, our alumni, they will say it's one of the best things that happened to them. It was actually a blessing in disguise because today they feel confident that no matter what happens, they will be able to deal with it. Fantastic. So uh, you are saying that how do we deal with the situation is like very important, right? Now, uh, tell us uh, uh, when this uh, whole uh, because of the this situation, campuses are closed now, and the education is happening online. Will the online education be as effective as the physical one-to-one -one education, face-to-face education? Hmm. 
let me give you a short history about online education and then I will answer your question. So online education really became very popular, I think in 2011, 12, thanks to what is today known as MOOCs, or massive open online courses. Yes. Coursera being one of the leaders. So you have a Stanford professor who teaches you a subject, it could be something, maybe AI, and it's for free and you can watch it when you feel like. Now, how good is that, right? It's very appealing. Students were flocking to it like moths to a light bulb. They were very excited. My God, this is a dream come true. Except that this model has a fatal flaw. And this flaw is that more than 95% of the students who start one of these courses don't complete it. So what's the point of starting something that you don't complete? Now, let me share what we're doing at SPJ. We have developed a new category that's called premium learning online. Now, premium learning online is not free. You have to pay a fee, but the learning experience will not only be as good as on-campus learning, but even better. And I can share that with you uh, because we have developed this very new cutting edge technology. Let me park that and share with you what are the alternative technologies and then I will tell you more about this cutting edge technology. So, the the, the live teaching that happens is done through Zoom or Google Team or some similar technology. Now these technologies were designed for office use. It was not designed for education. It's designed for office use. Whereas we have developed this very new cutting edge technology that's called Engaged Learning Online or ELO for short, which is custom designed for classrooms. So you feel that you are sitting in a classroom. And because of this, we are very confident that our students who are studying online will get a terrific online experience that in many ways is even better than on-campus experience. Now, the only problem is that when you go to a physical campus, you can share a plate of samosas with your friends, right? And that's what we do in college. We eat, we sit in the cafeteria, we you know, chat, and we have that social experience. Unfortunately, we cannot replicate that social experience in the home, uh, because unless you're very friendly with your siblings or you're very friendly with your parents, you won't have that same social experience. That, unfortunately, is the only trade-off. But when you look at the learning experience, we have designed this new technology. We have designed how you can learn using this new technology. And in every other way, you will get a real full learning experience, unlike what you would get on Coursera, because the faculty who teach you are live. They are teaching you with no recordings. They can take questions, you can put up your hand, you can do a real-time poll. The faculty can stand and look at you and make eye contact. He's followed by a robotic camera. So no matter, he can jump around the room and it looks like he's in a real classroom. So there are many features that actually can replicate a real classroom experience. And we are the only ones to have this technology in all of Asia because we have developed the technology, it's an SPJ and IT that we have. Fantastic. You also have, I, uh, I think, uh, uh, things like uh, internships or uh, doing live uh, uh, case studies in the MBA program. So how do you replicate that experience in this online system? So the engaged learning online pedagogy and way of learning 
is actually designed for case studies because the professor should speak only about 20% or less and 80% is classroom conversations. And it is designed so that students can be sitting in their homes and their homes can be located in any country. They don't have to be in the same city or even in the same country. They can be anywhere and they would have a real classroom experience. In fact, SPGN is even tying up with some international universities so we can share classrooms with other universities. And therefore, the learning experience would be even more compelling. And uh, you asked me another question, which I forgot. I was asking that uh, many times in the management uh, courses, uh, people go for internships, internships. In, uh, companies. Yeah, part of me forgot that first part. It's okay. So, so internships today has moved online and companies know that they cannot offer physical internships. It's a temporary period. It's not long term. It's for a short period. And so okay. they have uh, moved internships also online. And a lot of these internships are project based. So they will say develop this strategy or do something, you know, which is project based. And so I think that almost every one of our students is still doing that internship, but doing it online. And I think it's amazing. This sort of experience of doing an online internship, they would have never had. But it's a fantastic experience to learn something new, something that you would have never done previously. Uh, uh, so uh, when are you like uh, seeing the, uh, that the, your campus programs uh, may start in the physical uh, program also starts like COVID situation the campuses like uh, which are closed so are you like uh, looking at having those programs also and the online programs also right yes yeah, so you know till now we had only focused on on campus we had never really focused on online but because of COVID now we have seen uh, that online learning is also something that could be offered in parallel with on-campus learning or they could move to hybrid learning. So when you do a part of it, so, you know, previously, just uh, a few minutes ago, I talked about that social experience. Mm. So maybe you don't need the social experience for 12 months. You, you might need the social experience uh, every now and then, say for a week and a month or something like that. So we don't know how this would evolve. Uh, and we just are trying different models. I'm sure that there would be one winner and I cannot predict which one it would be. So we have 100% on campus, we have 100% online, and then we could have a combination of partly online, partly um, on campus and we just see which which one would succeed I don't know so uh, there are uh, lots of questions online if you uh, allow we can look at them and also discuss them yeah sure Why yeah so uh, <clears throat> there uh, there are queries around various points uh, Someone has asked that what is the internet uh, bandwidth online system uh, it requires for this program? I think that's a very pertinent question and thanks to whoever asked that question. It is, uh, let's say, the internet bandwidth is the lifeblood of online learning. And if mm -hmm. you don't have proper bandwidth, you won't get a proper experience. So the bandwidth that you would need for an SPGN program would be between three and five Mbps. So it's something that, uh, you know, people have anyway these days because we all live on Netflix and we live on the internet for other things. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't even have three to five Mbps, then I don't suggest that uh, you focus on online learning or do the easy thing, get, get the internet bandwidth. Because in any case, you will save a lot of money in staying on campus, food and various other things. It doesn't cost that much money these days. 
There is a question uh, which is asking that how will COVID-19 affect the prospect of professionals graduating with EMBA degrees from SP Jan Singapore? Well, you see, the way I look at it, Ravi, yeah. is today the entire world has stopped at a red light. Okay, if you think of traffic lights, the whole world has stopped at a red light. But, you know, the good news is, after red, the lights always turn green. And when the lights turn green, the car actually accelerates to its fastest level. That's when you, you know, slam the accelerator and you move forward. So the job prospects, whether it's EMBA or whether it's a full-time MBA or whether it's one of undergraduate programs, I think the best time to study is actually now. So it may be the worst time if you're graduating today and it's something that we just can't uh, you know, avoid. Unfortunately, we cannot avoid that because there are no jobs you know, in the, for the next few months. But if you enroll now and you graduate 12 to 18 months later, that's the time when the economy will be flying. We can just go back in time to 2009. When 2009 happened, the financial crisis of 2009, the economy was very bad. But you know what happened in 2010? The economy started flying. I just would like to share with you the rupee, which was 51 in 2009, appreciated to 45 in 2010. Yes. But the first time that actually the rupee became stronger, not weaker. So yes. I'm just making a point that, you know, the economy will recover. And once it recovers, it will try and catch up. Now, sure. there could be new businesses that evolve in the meantime. And some of the old businesses may never evolve to the old level. For example, hotels. They may not, it may not come back to its old level ever or at least for the next five years. But there's so many new businesses. And I just would like to make one more point here, that 50% of the companies in the Fortune 500 list were born in a recession, 50%. So you can see that, you know, the companies will be born, startups will be born, and Hiring will take place, but it will take place, I don't know, six months from now, 12 months from now. Surely it's going to happen. Sure. There is uh, another question. Uh, second. Uh, does an international student of SP Jan Dubai has to go every campus or they study from a single campus? See, our model has been that they go to all our campuses, three out of the four. Okay, that, that's been our model. And that model has worked well for all these years. But for this one year, because of the COVID-19 situation, we don't know whether all campuses will be open, one campus will be open, or two campuses will be open, we don't know. So we have moved the program to a single campus model right now giving the option to move to multiple campuses if multiple campuses are open. So we've been very flexible. Uh, we don't know exactly whether Dubai will be open or Singapore or Sydney or which one or India. We don't know. So we're just keeping it flexible for this one year to say, okay, whichever campus is open, you can study there. Uh, there is a question that how do you handle cross-cultural issues in foreign campuses uh, and uh, or uh, and another question is that uh, or which foreign campuses just an extension of the Indian campus yeah global learning program that accompanies the classroom program. So when you go to these campuses, 
you you see uh, you make class trips to Beres, uh, let's say Sydney. You do a project in a, a classroom has students from many different countries. A faculty come from twenty different countries. So the entire learning is very global. And as I said before, that is the reason why they get jobs outside India, because they're prepared for a global world that has been much appreciated by our recruiters. And so the learning that they get outside India definitely shapes them. Now, many times while they're studying, they don't realize that because they can't actually understand. Let, let me give you an example. Let's say, Ravi, you suddenly went on a sightseeing trip to Japan. And uh, somebody asks you, Ravi, tell me, what did you learn in Japan? I don't think you will be able to answer that question. But have you learned? Of course, you learned a lot. But you can't express that in words. So that's the reason sometimes the students don't exactly know what they've learned. But it's got uh, ingrained in their memory. And that definitely tells once you start a job and once they do business with people of a different nationality, they work in a global team, they are sent by their companies to source from a different country. They're looking to expand their markets. The benefit of this learning has uh, multiple benefits to every student. Uh, uh, there is a question by someone asking that uh, wanted to know your thoughts on the MBA in US and thoughts on schools extending deadlines for fall 2020. Uh, well, I'm not sure whether the question was U.S. right now or U.S. in general. Give a quick reply to both. Yeah. Or do you know the answer, uh, question, Ravi? No, okay. no, no. Okay. So, so it's I, like a gen yeah, general question. been renowned for having the best business schools in the world for forever. So uh, if you get into a leading Ivy League school in the U.S., I think you'll get a fantastic education. I myself was educated at Cornell University in the US, and I think it was an amazing uh, educational experience. So if you get into one of the leading Ivy League universities, I would say it's a great option for you. Of course, it costs a lot of money, so it depends on whether you can afford it, and uh, whether you can get admitted into a leading Ivy League university, that depends on several factors, including your GMAT score. But if the question is, should I take up the university admission right now? That's where I would begin to get a bit worried because I think the East uh, has done a far better job than the US or in Europe in controlling COVID. I think uh, the US may take a long, much longer than, uh, you know, let's say Dubai, Singapore, Sydney, India, than uh, to control the virus. This is just my feeling. I don't know for sure exactly what would happen. So I would be cautious if I wanted to go to the US in September. I believe that many US universities would actually delay the September start to January. But whether the US would be safe even in January, I don't know. So I'm not a soothsayer. And therefore, I can't say, but if somebody forced me to make a prediction, I don't think even by January, the US or Europe would be ready for students. It's just my view. Sure. There is a question uh, that sector uh, which will have immediate focus are healthcare, life sciences, energy, minerals, and agriculture, where budget and investment will happen. When we compare with the other top sectors like auto, air and so on, uh, what is the view of yours? I, I agree with you, Toki, that mm -hmm. I think uh, pharma would be a big winner in, this, uh, in the current situation. So there would be much more investment happening by uh, pharmaceutical companies just because they will now be preparing for the next COVID. They will be preparing for uh, uh, broad spectrum vaccinations. They would be doing many things. And India, because of its cost advantage, may have a benefit to partner with many US universities, uh, US uh, pharmaceutical companies. 
and so on. So I think pharma would be a very great beneficiary. There would be a great beneficiary in online businesses. Uh, there would be, uh, you know, delivery businesses would continue to grow and grow. Uh, so there would be new sectors that would emerge. And agriculture also agree with that, uh, you know, uh, comment. So there would be these new sectors that would emerge. And uh, one has to prepare and be open to join these sectors. And some of the old ones are historically... Uh, you know, well-reputed sectors may give way to some of the new emerging sectors. There's a question uh, asking that, how are you imparting instructions during COVID crisis? Also, how are you handling examinations? So at this juncture, learning has moved online. And, uh, you know, that as I shared with you, using a new technology, we think we are doing a better job compared to other universities who don't have that same technology. Exams have moved, in our case, to a software called Metal. These uh, exams are proctored. So because of the software and because we have people who are watching what every student is doing, uh, the exams are fully proctored. And I think it's, uh, it's working quite well. We have had no situation where uh, some student felt aggrieved or something went wrong. It's just uh, works beautifully, actually. No problems. There is a question that uh, peer learning was one of the key factors for an MBA learning. Tracking that online would, be a, would also be a good option. Is it possible to do so? Yeah, so, you know, the technology actually enables what's called as a breakout room. A breakout room is a room where you can have two, three, four, five people who discuss a topic. Now, if you look at a real campus, when you do breakout, either you have to do it before class, or if you're doing it in between class, it takes 10 minutes for students to go out of the room and find a breakout room and it's just disruptive. But when you look at it online, frankly, from a classroom view, to go to a breakout room takes you two seconds. The professor can toggle between um, classroom and breakout. And so, in fact, break in on, online. I shared with you before that in many ways, online is even better than on campus. And one of the ways it's better is because of the breakout room. And because you can do it so seamlessly, two seconds to go from one view to another, uh, professors used it a lot. So the entire way in which we teach at SPJ now is what we call the lab technique of learning. And the lab technique of learning simply means that you learn by doing. There's no point in learning when somebody's preaching to you. Nobody's interested in a professor talking nonstop for 90 minutes. That is not the way students enjoy the learning because the minute somebody talks more than 10 minutes, you're beginning to fidget with your phone. You're getting distracted and you just are not focused on your learning. But what if every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes, there is a group work that's happening. There's a discussion to be done. And you're doing this with uh, your peers. And you have to come back to class with some reply. Because the professor may say, how will COVID-19 end? And so you're discussing with your group. And then you come back. And the, it takes you two seconds to get into a breakout room and to come back. So that's an amazing technology that can be used very effectively a breakout. Sure. There is a question here that uh, given the kind of uh, model SP Jan follows for its MBA program, three international cities, will it be safe to study in these countries post COVID? If yes, what are the chances of Indian students getting a job uh, in these countries for a job? So obviously we will not start the campuses, nor will we be permitted by the local government 
to start these campuses till they feel it safe. Now, the question is, how will it be safe? Maybe somebody will develop vaccines. Maybe somebody will develop a rapid uh, test. So nowadays you can test, uh, you know, for COVID in 15 minutes. So you can just do tests more frequently and tests would be more available. So there are many ways in which I think uh, countries will figure out how they can reopen. Nobody can remain closed for business for an extended period of time because they just get go bankrupt. Countries can go bankrupt. So I think they will find a way. Second one, would SPJN continue the Tri-City? What, what is the second question, Ravi? That, uh, will the students get employed, employment abroad, like locally, in the Dubai or Sydney? Or oh, I understood the question. Uh, let me answer that. So when, when you look at, there's a difference between postgraduate and undergraduate. So first I'll talk about postgraduate and then I'll talk about undergraduate. In order for you to get a work visa in Australia, you have to sir. And because we are a fast track accelerated one year MBA, uh, they don't get work rights. Despite that, some students still manage to get, uh, you know, PR and visas because they have a point system. And if they get the requisite points, they can still work. And we help them because we are very well connected with companies there. But it is far more probable that they will get employment in Dubai and in Singapore and in India. These are the three countries where our students mostly get jobs. We have a program called MGB, a Master of Global Business. This is like an MBA, but for those with up to three years of work experience. These students all do an internship in either Dubai, Singapore, which is 80 or 90 percent, and India for the balance. Now, a very large number of our students convert these internships to get jobs. Because if you're interning for four months, let's say with a company in Singapore, and you do a good job, then the company will offer you a full-time job. And this happens a lot. Um, so this is the way in which our postgraduates get jobs outside India. Now, when you look at the undergraduates, they spend two years in Australia. So they, they do uh, the first in Singapore or Mumbai. They do the second year in Dubai and they do the third and fourth years in Australia. And because they've studied two years, they can actually get a work visa. Now, more than half our students want to work in Australia. And because of the work visa, they are actually able to get jobs in Australia. And uh, so this 50% who are interested to work in Australia stay back and work. The balance 50% come from many other countries and they want to go back to their home country. And so they just go back to their home country. So this is the way in which employment uh, takes place at SPJ. And we have the students who want to work in Australia using our connections, we have them. There is a question that uh... If the physical learning is not possible this year, are you taking all your learning online on your ELO? And what would uh, be the fee structure be on the ELO as it cannot be same as the usual physical classes? This is your question. <clears throat> we have delayed the intake to September. And we believe that our part of the world, which is Dubai or Singapore, would be open for business by then. In fact, we've been told by the authorities in Dubai that we could actually enroll new students by August, by July, August. We have been also told by the Indian authorities that we can start by August. This is a, a notification by the government. So we have kept one month more as reserve and say we will start in September. And even if September does not happen, we can further delay it by one month to October. So we believe that we would be actually able to start a physical learning environment 
by September, October of this year. Now, just in case we cannot, which again, as I said, I don't know, then for a few months, maybe one or two months, we will move the learning online. And so um, we don't know, frankly, Ravi, we just have to see how it comes. So the focus or our objective is to move to online, uh, to on-campus learning as fast as we possibly can. Now the on-campus, we would naturally have to take precautions of sanitization and, uh, you know, various precautions that uh, anyone would take and we are very prepared for that. There is a question about uh, what is the effect on placement for the graduates of this year and how do you feel you can help them in this rough time? Does SP Jan have any clarity on how will 2021 20, admissions and which campuses will operate? So, you know, I, I had said before that if you're graduating now, life is not very good. Uh, only because nobody is recruiting. They're frozen recruitment. The companies are looking at saving current jobs and they're not looking to add on new jobs. That said, there's still, you know, some companies that are recruiting even today. So it's not like zero, but it's much reduced. But a year from today, I think the scene would be the exact opposite of what it is today. Because when the traffic lights turn from red to green, everyone is looking at building their businesses at very fast. And I feel that would happen. We have a lot of history that reflects that that would happen. And, uh, you know, as I shared, the rupee appreciated. Can you believe? You know, the rupee always depreciates, but even the rupee appreciated. And it, the rupee was not the only currency. Many did. So it shows that things change. And I expect it to change. But this year, to come back to the question, it's tough. We are trying our very best. Frankly, our alumni are the ones who are really helping the school. So I'm very thankful to them. They are absolutely standing by us you know, the time of need. If they are not able to get them full-time jobs, at least they're giving them internships. And if these, if the internships uh, go well, they will convert these internships to a regular job. So instead of doing nothing, they are at least doing internships at this uh, point in time. There is a question that, uh, uh, what do you, think it's a huge difference between a student from SP Jain and other B schools all around the world? Well, it's a very <laughs> good question uh, because the raw material entering the program is exactly the same. We are not a magician to change the way the student looks, change the hairstyle, change the dress. We don't do these things. But we do have a very positive impact in how the student is prepared for the modern world in how he makes decisions, how creative the student is, how well the student can communicate, the physical presence, not, I mean, what I mean by physical, I mean the presence of that student in a room, uh, the impact that student would have. I think we have a, you know, very positive impact on all these things. And it is because of the curriculum that we have the curriculum is designed to focus on this. Let me give you just one example. We have a concept called student boardroom. Now in the student boardroom, uh, students take boardroom like decisions and they take these boardroom like decisions every day or every second day. So they are a group of four or five students. They're given a problem and then they have to solve the problem and with that solution comes back to the classroom. And uh, the, the way they take these decisions is using a structured approach. It's not just, I think this company should do this and that. It's a very structured approach and it trains the mind to take decisions in a very structured way, but this structured way is very effective. And we have found it to be very effective. And then all our students do some very cutting edge courses, for example, in design thinking and uh, which focuses on creativity. So there is a big emphasis 
on how do you become creative? How do you have your analytical ability, critical thinking? And you discuss not only with students from India, but many other countries. And so I think uh, students who finally graduate do have an edge. And that edge is proven year after year because of the sort of jobs that they get. So I think it makes a difference. Now, if you compare our students from that, from those who go to an Ivy League university, let's just say Harvard or Stanford, they would have other skills. I mean, they may just have better um, you know, qualities before the program, or they get into I am Ahmedabad or something. I think the, the quality of students that go there are better. And I have to admit that very openly. So we may not be able to compete with the top most schools in the world, but if you leave them apart, I think students get a very good education at SPJ. Uh, there is a question that, that uh, does the value of online certification course will be equal to offline course? Thank you for asking that. Yes. So the degree that they get at the end of it does not even say online. It's the same degree that they get. Now the question is, would uh, recruiters recognize that online degree as though it's face-to-face -face or on campus? Yes. How do they recognize or why do they recognize rather? Is it because of what we teach, how they teach and how they can assess what they've learned. And I have been stressing from the very beginning of this webinar that the online learning can be even superior to on-campus learning. Let me just say one or two more points when it comes to this, because many people have asked this question. It's very important that they understand how can it be even superior? And it can, let's just look at this uh, webinar that we have, right? Every participant is sitting in the first row. They can see me, they can see you, as though we are sitting, as though they are sitting in the first row. Although I can't see them, but I'm sure when they can see me or they see you, they feel connected because they have a full first row seat. Now, I believe there's some six, seven hundred people. I don't know how many in this uh, webinar, but let's just think that it was a physical hall. Most of them would be sitting at the back of the hall, right? They could not all be sitting in the first row. Maybe the first 10 or 15 people would be in the first row, but everyone else would be sitting at the back. Now you would not have the same feeling of being connected. And because you're sitting far away, again, the, those distractions start. Again, the temptation to look at your phone, the temptation to talk to your neighbor, all of this is very high. So I think the very fact that a Zoom webinar can be better than a physical meeting, it proves that online can be even better than the physical. Now, when you look at classroom learning, again, there are no backbenchers. Everyone is sitting in the first row. The professor can make eye contact with 60 students all at the same time. And we also have software that can measure the alertness of every student because of some very special high technology that we have. That you can even measure whether the student is alert by looking by the software will determine where is the student looking, the, 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 whether the pupil is contracted and various other, you know, very, very high end. Can that be done in a physical campus? There's no professors looking at the pupils of one's eye in a physical campus. So what I'm trying to say is that online can be even better than on campus. Now I'm going to come back and answer this question. So would a recruiter look at online in the same fashion as the recruiter would look at on campus? And the, and the answer is absolutely, because finally what a recruiter is looking for is the skills that the person is uh, hiring, is the talent the person is getting. And if that talent is equal or better, then there's no reason why the recruiter would not hire. And uh, I think and as far as the student is concerned, 
the degree looks exactly the same. So we offer MBA degrees, Ravi, or a bachelor's of business administration degree, or in all our programs and degrees. We don't have any diplomas, so it's all degree programs. So the degrees that they get at the end of the program, the EMBA program that you spoke about earlier from Singapore, it's a degree. It doesn't say online on it. It's just it's MBA. And so therefore the value of that degree, that even what a student gets is no different than our on campus. And I can again say for the last time only in this webinar, the learning is even better. That much I can tell you. But the social experience is not as good. So it's a bit of a trade-off when you look at the social experience, but not the learning experience. There is a question that uh, can someone shift from online to offline campus? For certain programs, yes. For certain programs, uh, they could shift. For example, EMBA, they can shift from online to offline because we have both running in parallel. So they, they could do that. For our full-time MBA, it would only depend if we offer both in parallel. At this point in time, we are not looking to offer it in parallel. We are looking to only offer the on-campus. But if people and if students say we want online, then we can change it because we can immediately change the way in which we deliver because these technologies are already with us. We already have what we call a ELO studio, Engage Online uh, Learning Online Studio in uh, Mumbai, in Dubai, in Sydney, in Singapore to be ready in two weeks. So we have these studios and all these places. And that means the international faculty that we have, and we have a lot of international faculty from all over the world, from the US, from Europe, from India, Singapore, Australia, from all these places, could just go into one of these rooms and teach a student. So imagine that there is a, a professor of supply chain in Sydney is very good and he can teach somebody based in say Chandigarh or Bhopal or any city in India uh, you know seamlessly so the person doesn't actually have to travel to Bhopal or Chandigarh or any other city but he's somewhere else so the technology is such that a person can actually deliver very high quality online learning and so I have a feeling that over a period of time, once people get used to the concept of online, learning will shift online. But uh, at this point, when people are not used to it, we'll say, let's, let's stay with the on-campus learning. And uh, so for the full-time program, we offer only on-campus. But for EMBA, because we get a lot of inquiries from many other places where we don't even have a campus, therefore, uh, we offer the online and on campus for EMBA. Sure. There is a question that uh, do, are you offering bachelor's program online also? Yes, yes. So thanks for asking that question. Um, so, you know, today there are a lot of students who have got admitted to US or to Europe, UK and different countries and they don't want to go. So they are taking what's known as a gap year. That means they will not go for one year because their parents are very worried. You know, especially undergraduate students, the parents have a very uh, big influence over what this child would finally end up doing. And so the parents said, no matter what, you're not going into the US for one full year. Let things settle down, then you can go. Now, these parents also don't want their students to be wasting their time for this one year. So we have got a lot of inquiries from such parents. Can you offer this online? So we are offering this online. And even in Mumbai, if they want, they can come. So they, they are able to study online and get the same sort of learning experience or even better uh, for, for one year. And uh, then after that is their choice, whether they would like to then, you know, proceed to the US. But uh, so to answer your question, yes, 
we are offering undergraduate programs online and this would count towards your degree. So the credits that you get studying at SPJN can be transferred to the university that you would finally go. And US universities accept our credits, European universities accept our credits. So it's uh, up to you to decide whether you want to go or you know, do whatever, but that option is there studying with us. I think uh, we have covered uh, most of the questions and other questions are almost a repetition of uh, these questions. So uh, any last uh, comments like you want to make uh, and uh, we could then conclude that? Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll just say one other thing that today a lot of students have got a lot of time on their hands because they're stuck at home. And they're stuck at home. You could be a high school student stuck at home, or you could be a college student stuck at home. And parents say, okay, you can watch Netflix as you know for most of the time, but at least spend two, three hours studying. Use your time effectively. So we have now got a whole bunch of short courses. These courses uh, are very practical courses. It leads to SPJN certification. So it's not some small time training institute. It's an SPJN certification. And they are taught live by SPJN faculty. So for example, we have how do you become an Instagram influencer? It's a very practical program taught by a lady Italian professor from a Dubai campus who has 1 million followers. So we have, uh, you know, design thinking taught by Dr. Meadows, who's an American lady. She's a doctorate from Harvard and she teaches design thinking. So students get top end faculty, even though they're just three week classes. And uh, I think this is something that a lot of students and parents would be very happy to know that they can get you know, short courses, three weeks, six weeks, develop a skill, and it is something that they could use in building their CV, getting a new skill. And so I think uh, I just thought I should share this with you. And all of these follow the SPGen lab pedagogy. 15 minutes of class time, 15 minutes of lab time, which means learn by doing. Don't just be lectured to because that doesn't help. So if you want to become this Instagram influencer, actually do it. You will be taught how to really do it. And I think when you look at uh, some of the recorded ones, and I don't want to use names because I don't want to be little anybody, but these recorded ones don't have that lab sort of feel because you can learn some of the stuff, but you can't actually learn by doing. So if you want to learn driving, Right? You can have uh, um, Hamilton teach you driving, uh, but unfortunately, you won't learn anything unless you actually get behind the wheels of a car. So there is lots to be said for that practical learning. And I think our school focuses on that. So, uh, Nitish, we have had an amazing interaction. And thanks for uh, highlighting the various uh, new programs which uh, your institution has launched. They are uh, very interesting and uh, compliments to you uh, for building up a very renowned and respected uh, business school, which is like across several countries. And uh, one can actually say like uh, this is a made in India a product which has actually gone global. And it is of, of course like something like uh, Indians can be proud of this institution. So thanks to you and hats off to you for building this. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi, for your very kind words. It's been a real pleasure to be with you today. And thanks yes. to the audience. And yeah. So many of you and for your participation in asking these questions. It's been delightful. Thank you so much. So thank you, all the audience. And if you are like this interaction and and if you think uh, that this conversation can help any of the students or parents you can like and share uh, this video which is available on our Elets uh, Facebook page. Thank you uh, Ritesh, and thank you all the audience.
नमस्कार थैंक यू